Hi everybody, welcome to the Wild Creative and Confident, a video interview series where you can learn from the most inspiring industry leaders on how you can use your passion and your creativity to design the life and business of your dreams. I'm your host, Sarah Marie Thompson from wildandcreative.com, and I'm here today with Flora Boley. And Flora is just honestly, she is the coolest chick. <laughs> I have her book right here, Brave Intuitive Painting. And she is an international celebrated painter, teacher, author, and inspirationalist. Her vibrant paintings can be found in numerous galleries, public spaces, and online covers of unique products made in collaboration with Papaya Art. And I know that you also um, are a yoga instructor and that you touch lives of people all over the world. Now, with your, with your paintings, with your sesh, um, lessons that you have in your studio, with your um, new program you have called Studio Sessions, you are everywhere. And the great thing about your art is that it is very recognizable. I think, we've, I think we talked about that before, and you said that once you've, you've come a long way to really get that recognizable art, but I think that it, to, that's an amazing thing for an artist to achieve, is that recognizable style. Mm, yeah, absolutely. So tell me, where, where did you really get your inspiration from? Like, were you, um, a, from a child, were you always painting and drawing and... and making little things with sticks and things like that? Or where, where did it stem from? I was making things with sticks. <laughs> say that. Um, yeah, no, I, um, I'm one of those people that's uh, always been creative. It's always been my, it's always been like my comfort zone, really. And it's been what has uh, provided me a lot of um, just creative expression and outlet and, uh, you know, personal satisfaction from the time I was really little. So I always had lots of painting and drawing and creations and sculptures and things happening um, at any given time. And then, you know, I was kind of the art teacher's pet in high school and then went on to get a degree in painting and drawing. So um, it's it's been there all along. Yeah. And as far as where do I get my inspiration, um, I would say... You know, there's the obvious answers like from nature and from color and all of that is true. And I'm definitely, uh, I consider myself a gatherer of in inspiration and information all the time. You know, I, I have a, I'm always like, oh, how could that work itself into what I'm working on in the studio? Um, but ultimately, I think I get most of my inspiration from the process itself. Meaning, you know, when I'm painting and moving colors around and figuring out how it's going to all work out, to me, there's a lot of energy in that. Um, I work in a way that is very open to the mystery, meaning I don't really have a preconceived idea of what I'm doing before I start um, as a conscious choice. You know, I, I go in just mark making and I work in acrylic doing layers. And so it's really forgiving in that way. You can change your mind, turn the canvas upside down, like get rid of stuff, add stuff. And it's just this like super uh, morphable, if that's a yeah. word, um, <laughs> uh, process. And so that process uh, really inspires me. I think it's super fun to work that way. So Now I actually, I'll tell you how I came to, to, to know you. This is, this is quite interesting. So I saw once on Instagram that you were having a, um, a course that you were doing, like, um, I don't know what you'd call it, your Brave Intuitive painting course? The Bloom True course, yeah. Right, and so somebody was, was promoting it and saying that, you know, you should take this course, and I was interested in it, and um, so I, I purchased, the, purchased the program for when it was going to start, but I thought, I swore I knew your name from somewhere, like, it was just, I hadn't really got to know you yet, and that kind of thing, and then this book arrived on, in Am from Amazon, like, literally, a week later and I was like well that must be meant to be right because I obviously wasn't paying attention too much to what I was purchasing but this book really grabbed my attention and no that's how I kind of like operate on Amazon by intuitive choices but um and so I took your course and it was um amazing it's set up beautifully but also the way that you show your method of painting is very makes people feel very confident that they can do do art as well for people that haven't haven't painted before or anything like that in your lessons that you do at your studio do you have a lot of newbies that have never painted before like the, in the in-person workshops yeah 
them. Yeah. Um, I do. I, I have this, it, it's like goes without, you know, every, with, without fail, is what I'm trying to say. Every time I have a workshop, I have this um, spectrum of who shows up and there's always a couple of professional artists in the group. And then there's people that have never painted, like you just said, and then there's sort of everyone in between. So um, the cool thing is it doesn't matter with my process. Um, even if you're a professional artist, I hope that my process kind of you know, opens up some other avenue or, or thing to explore. And it might be, for a lot of people, it's radically different than what they're used to doing. So that's cool. Um, and then for people that have never painted, it's like you just said, it's really accessible. It's, right. um, I, I, that's a big, that's a big one for me because I'm all, I think my, my life mission has sort of become to, um, you know, help guide people in a way where they remember that they're creative. Right. You know, and so the process that I've developed um, through my own curiosity and like preference in terms of how I like to work uh, is really cool in that it translates in this way where, like I said, it's really forgiving. And so people that have never painted, it's like, it doesn't matter, just, just go and let go and then um, build your layers and t keep taking stock and work with what's working. And I have all the, you know, as you know, from taking the class, there's all these ways that I kind of work with that. But I think it really um, creates a lot of freedom, like a sense of freedom that I think a lot of other painting styles and approaches don't embrace, you know, because it's like maybe you're trying to paint the fruit bowl or you're trying to paint the landscape and that's a lot of pressure, you know? <laughs> and just, I, let's go of all the rules. So you're painting, let's go of every rule. Uh, yeah, it's like there's no rules. I'm constantly saying there's no mistakes. There's no rules. There's no right, one, right, right, right way or wrong way. You know, it's it's um it's a lot about what feels good to the person, and everyone's different. So to some people, it might feel good to really get out those tiny brushes and work some real detailed stuff. It's like by all means, you know. Yeah. Um, for other people, they love painting with their fingers, and it's just the best thing ever. And the one rule that I always cut, not rule, uh, but, you know, the, the, the reminder that I offer is that, um, you know, the real key, no matter how you're painting, is that you're, stay, you're always staying open to change. Right. So if you, that means you can, yeah, sure, you could even paint the fruit bowl, you know, but maybe that fruit bowl wants to turn into something else. Or maybe you try it and you're like, eh, I'm going to actually t turn that into an abstract painting or I'm going to turn it upside down or whatever. As long as you have that sort of sense of anything can happen, then you're in the process, you know. So what it looks like could be all kinds of stuff. So can you kind of give us a timeline of, of how you got to where you are today? Um, you know, and that also, I would love, I'm very interested in knowing, you know, what kind of steps you took or when you felt that it was time to, you know, open up your own studio and open it up to, to the public and all, everything like that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's been an interesting journey because I really never could have predicted how things have unfolded for me. I mean, not in a million years. So I, like I said, was always a kind of a painter um, from the time I was in younger, but then in college, I really solidified that as my medium. And I got it in my head, who knows how, when I was like 20, that I would make a living as a painter, which is kind of a crazy thought. But I, you know, lived really simple, and I dedicated myself um, in a really big way to, to trying to make that happen. And I, and I squeaked up, squeaked by for a long time, <laughs> uh, selling paintings, you know, practically out of the back of my car, you know, it was kind of like that. And um, I did get to a point when I was about 30 that things were kind of working in terms of like I had enough avenues of income through the prints and originals and I mean I was still you know just making it barely but it was it felt like I'd kind of arrived yeah. um, a little bit you know. You're getting notoriety. And, yeah yeah my audience was growing and you know I just said I, I'm really prolific so I painted like tons of paintings by that point and um uh, but I started to, in my early 30s, kind of when I got to that point, feel this um, sense that there was something else, that, that actually being in my studio, making artwork all the time, wasn't fulfilling me in the way that I had thought it would. Like, it was always the dream job in my mind. And then when I got there, I realized, wait a second, I am a little bit lonely, <laughs> and I really want to be making more of a difference in the world. Um, I knew I was, you know, creating beauty and that's a great thing, but I wanted to work in a way that felt like I was really um, contributing to some kind of positive change in the world. So um, it was about the time I was 30, 
six um, that I was really hitting that wall. And I was like, okay. So I started talking to all the people in my life that I respect saying, hey, I don't know what else I'm going to do, but I'm just putting it out there that I feel like there's something else. And I had no idea. I had never once thought of, and this is so crazy to me now, that I would teach painting. It just never occurred to me. I don't know. I was just, I was a yoga teacher and I taught there, but never occurred to me. And then one day my friend on a hot Katkin, who owns Papaya, a company I license with, said, well, why don't you teach painting? <laughs> Obviously. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. And she ended up writing a blog post um, about my work and how they, their, her business was working with my work. And she mentioned at the very end that I might start teaching soon. Like she just kind of put that out there and I got sort of inundated with people that were interested in the workshop that didn't exist yet. And so that was a really big sign from the universe, you know, just yeah. like, Oh, okay. That's interesting. And one of those people that wrote me in the days to follow that blog post uh, was a woman that runs um, Squam art workshops, which is a big art workshop retreat place on the East coast. I'd never heard of it. Now I understand it's like a pretty, you know, well-known place. And so she said, well, come teach here. Let this be your first place. And I was like, holy shit. Okay. You know, like, why not? So I went to New Hampshire and um, I taught this workshop and it was like changed my whole life. I, the, the, I learned a lot. I mean, I definitely had no clue what I was doing, but I, you know, I just kind of put myself out there taught what I knew and immediately felt so much gratification and like, this is the thing. This is it. Like, I want to share, I want to share this with people. And so it just snowballed in this crazy way from there. Like the week after that workshop, I got asked to write a book, that book that you're holding. Yeah. <laughs> and then invitations to teach like all over the world started coming in. It was just a real, um, that place is, is part of a big network. And so, you know, if you teach there and people dig what you do, it yeah. set you up to be connected, um, yeah. which was great. And so I spent the next three years flying around the world and writing the book and just being like in this <laughs> vortex. <laughs> yeah, like it just took on its own like life. But like I said, like never could have seen it coming, right? And then um, I did that for for some years, and then I started to get really burnt out on the traveling aspect of things and. Um, I just was craving like home base and like my own bed and all that stuff. So, um, so that's when I got, I've always had studio spaces, you know, that are like for me, but, um, that's when I rented my big, uh, awesome, like 2000 square foot studio that I have right now was, um, was like a, a year and a half ago that I rented that. So pretty new. Um, and I was, other, other than that, I was teaching at like retreat centers and places and other places. So now I have, yeah, I have a really great studio that I, I host workshops in um, almost every month. And it's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's great. So, so before you, you taught that first class, did you have any idea going into it? Like, did you create yourself kind of like a, a schedule for the class? Or did you totally just wing it, knowing that you'd like to incorporate <laughs> no, other no, things? Like, yeah. I, you know what I did? Cause I was terrified. Like I was like, how do I, it's what I do is so into, it's an intuitive painting. So I'm like, how do you teach that in a linear way? Like what the hell? Um, so I wrote an email to some of my friends and I said, Hey, I want to teach a workshop as a practice run. Do you want to come for free? <laughs> and so I had, I did like a pretty big studio for myself at that point. So I had, you know, 10 of my friends come and we did, a two day workshop. And I just, tr they were like my, to I called them my guinea pigs the whole time. And, um, I tried it out and I learned a bunch of stuff on that run and they loved it. And I got a bunch of great feedback. So then when I did go to Squam, I wasn't just like completely, you yeah. know, <laughs> so that helped a lot. And then every workshop I've taught since I learn, you know, you just, you learn by doing, it. I never would know now what I knew then. It's just only through showing up and doing it. Well, it's like all the best teachers are just always learning, right? So, I mean, in their experience. Absolutely. How have you taken your passion for life and your business or your art, because it's all, it's all one pretty much, to the level that's different than most people? And, and what makes you really unique in that sense? You know, I think a big, there's a lot of factors to that for sure. Um, I think a big one for me is that I always, uh, well, for many, many years, I didn't, um, I didn't, I kind of like lived in my own little reality where I just painted a lot, you know, so I created my own style in a really authentic way. You know, I wasn't taking other courses. I wasn't taking 
I don't know. I just, well, I was looking at art a little bit as you do as an artist, but I wasn't um, really feeling that influenced by anyone else. And I'm really grateful for that now because um, when I did get to that point of like sharing it, it was all me, you know, mm -hmm. it was like, that was my baby. And, um, and that I think has carried me in a really big way because I think people connect to the authenticity behind the work. Um, and another thing that I do in my workshops is I weave together um, like my background with yoga and the healing arts and, you know, ceremony and all these other things that I've always just been really, um, truly passionate about and interested in. I've been studying for 20 years now. So when I start a workshop, we start with a, with a moving meditation and then that moves into a little yoga and then that moves into a sharing circle and all of that stuff is just who I am, you know, yeah. but what it is, is a unique offering you know, to, I think to integrate kind of some of the different things I do, it, it shows up as sort of this thing that is different than what a lot of other people are doing. And so I think that's been huge. People have just resonated with it and been like, Hey, I love to move my body and have a spiritual connection and I want to try painting and you make it seem really easy. <laughs> so there's all that that's really been working for me. Um, I'm also just kind of a born entrepreneur, you know, like, like I was trying to sell my little, stick sculptures when I was like seven. Do you know what I mean? Like I, like, I just think it's kind of fun to be able to make a business out of what you love. Like I've always had that mentality of just like, it's almost a game, um, which I know is pretty unique. <laughs> and a lot of people don't have that. And so I'm grateful that I just, um, I'm not afraid to put myself out there. I'm always coming up with new ideas and kind of like just trying stuff on. And, um, and that is huge. You know, like, you know, it's, it's a huge part of making a business work is just like putting yourself out there with confidence a lot over and over again. I want to ask you what your youngest business venture was and at what age? <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Well, oh my God. I mean, I had every odd job you can even possibly consider. Um, and I waited tables forever. I think, you know, I went to yoga, yoga teacher training when I was like 22 and I was like the youngest person in the whole group, I think. And I became a yoga teacher when I was that age. So that's when I, that's the first time I really was like, oh my God, I'm like in business for myself, you know? And then I became a massage therapist a couple years later. And so those were, yeah, those were my early things. Um, but in terms of art stuff, I mean, I used to, <laughs> I used to like have auctions at my house where I would just be like, come on over everybody I know and like name your price. <laughs> and I would just, you know, like move art that way. Like I just was never afraid, you know? And so I think, um, that's always served me. Do you, but do you remember like, you know, selling art to your family members when you're oh, like yeah. sick or something like oh, that? Yeah, totally. I even, yeah, I sold, I tried to sell them art and then I also would, um, it's so like foreshadowing. I would make this like zone of pillows and it would be like a massage area. And I would like, <laughs> charge them like 25 cents per, you know, half hour or something. You get the whole experience. I would just like massage their back <laughs> with my little hands. Um, yeah. I, and yeah, anyone that wanted to pay, I would, I would do that. <laughs> Someone was asking me the other day what mine was. And literally when I was probably at four or five, I tried to create a pen fixing business. Right. <laughs> take apart pens, put them together. And like, I guess I'm refurbishing <laughs> Uh, but you know like the whole disposable pen thing happened and then so it didn't work out but um yeah anyway <laughs> everybody has like those funny little um little business stories entrepreneurs always have them and it's it's just so funny like how our minds were working like back then you just thought that was normal <laughs> yeah and our and our parents our poor parents had to like probably like shell out like all of their change like every day for something new right <laughs> What would you say has been your biggest achievement to date when it comes to personal power and understanding yourself to the point where your life is just, it's just all ease and flow now? I'm not saying all, all parts are, but. Oh well, yeah, no, it's, um, you know, a huge, huge thing for me that's been like a big hurdle was just getting comfortable being seen um, because I was really shy growing up. Like, I'm not the type of person who just, like, wants the attention and, like, look at me and let me be the loud person. Like, I was the shy one, like, sketching in the corner, you know? And so when I became a yoga teacher in my early 20s, it was terrifying to me to get up in front of a group of people and talk. And, I mean, 
oh my God, I can't, I, I can't even believe I did that looking back. Like that was so hard for me. And then there was this whole next level of that when I created my first e-course and I had to be in front of a video camera. It was just like, oh my God, I'm going to die. This is so terrible. And, and it was pretty awkward. <laughs> and now I look at what I create because I do video work all the time. And I'm just so much more comfortable with myself, mm -hmm. you know, and in delivering information, it's like, I have come so far in that way. And it's, and it's been the key in a lot of ways to my success is to just own my, you know, what I'm saying and who I am and what I look like and like all of the stuff that we like trip on. I'm just like, I mean, I think it helps. I'm 41 now and I just, I'm kind of at a place where I'm more comfortable in my own skin, you know? And, um, I'm like, I'm proud of that, you know? That's, yeah. That's huge for so many people, right? Cause there's so many people, um, you know, even into their 60s, 70s that are still active with, with what they're doing, but they're still, they still have that fear. There's, and it's, it's just a shame, right? You just really need to let it out. Like be you, just go live. Like I always say, if you're worried about putting a website out, if you're really scared, just make it go live. Yeah. And, then, oh, there you go. <laughs> and it's so easy, you know, if someone saw one of my things now, or maybe someone's seeing me right now on your thing, and they're like, oh, she's pretty comfortable and confident and stuff. And it's just to, to say to everyone, like, it hasn't always been like this. You know, like, I have come just so, so far in that way. And so the only way to get comfortable is to do it. You know, mm -hmm. that is the only way to get comfortable is to show up. And I, you know, I feel like I see public speaking in my future. And I'm just like, oh, God, like, that sounds terrible. And also really invigorating on this other level. And I'm just like it's going to have to just happen. And that's how I'm going to move through the fear because that's why I've done it for everything else. You know, and if you think about the public speaking, that's freaking out, freaking you out, you might think to yourself, well, what am I going to talk to people about? Right. But like you have such a cache of information. We all do. Um, yeah. Talk about what you know, like, you know, make your business about what you know, and then it's, and then it's comfortable for you. Absolutely. Um, okay. So this might not make sense, but how have you taken the root of being creative? And I don't necessarily mean like your, your art, um, but just in business, the root of being creative opposed to being competitive in this industry and how has competition, has it bothered you over the past few years? Because noticing your art style and being very aware of how you paint, I, I am seeing a few people online since painting similar right i'm not saying you were the first i'm not saying they were the first whatever but how do you handle the competition if anything yeah interesting um you know i think my nature is pretty non-competitive like that's just kind of who i am like i'm sort of like the more the merrier and like let's all win yeah. <laughs> you know that's my my general attitude i've always got them in that way so that's a good thing i'm grateful for that um that doesn't say i don't uh get you know, rubbed the wrong way when I see things that don't feel right. And um, there's a real, to me, there's like a real line in the sand um, because obviously I'm teaching my method all over the world, you know, through these different venues. And uh, by doing that, I'm sort of giving, I'm sort of giving it up in a way, you know, I'm not keeping it all like to me myself. Yeah. And so there's a certain level of just having to like, let it go and be like, people are going to copy your stuff, you know, and, and, um, I'm pretty, I have a pretty good relationship to that. Um, the line in the sand comes when people, um, start selling it, you know, they go from being a student and learning and like trying stuff on to being like, this is my art with my name on it. Yeah. And I see work all the time that I can see, oh, they were one of my students clearly, yeah. but they've taken it in this way that is, is becoming their own. And, and to me, I can really see that. And it's like a visceral response, you know? And then I see some other people's work and I'm like, ugh, like that does not feel good in my stomach. Yeah. You know? And it's because they're using my imagery, my colors, my process, all, they're taking all of it. Yeah. And putting it out there as theirs and without any credit. That's, that's the other thing. It's like, you know, I come from a yoga tradition where, or yoga world where we credit our teachers. Mm -hmm. That's a built-in part of the yoga tradition is that you come from a lineage and you tell, you tell people who your teachers are, you know? And so I would love to start making that part of the art world <laughs> tradition because, you know, sometimes I've seen things that felt a little bit off and then I go read their bio 
and right away they give me credit yeah as being their teacher and that feels so good yeah like, oh, thank you you know like that feels right and when I don't see my name anywhere um you know I usually write those people and 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 I do and I and I feel like it's my um and it doesn't come from a like hey you kind of place it comes from um my teacher responsibility place and feeling like you know if I'm really a good teacher I need to follow through and and kind of tell people when it doesn't feel okay because they probably have no idea you know yeah, if you're, and if you're a writing teacher you're gonna say the exact same thing about plagiarism right so yeah. it's just like it's not legal you know and it's not just not legal it's not it's not okay you know and so um, those are always really uncomfortable emails for me to write, but I do write them and, you know, the responses vary. Um, but it's, uh, I just think it's a conversation that needs to be had more mm -hmm. and, and it's one that I'm willing to have and in a more and more public way. I'm actually, my studio diary, which is my new online program, uh, in February is focusing all on this topic of finding your own voice and authenticity and stuff. And I'm just like, let's, let's talk about it, you guys. <laughs> like, let's not make it a weird thing, you know? Like, let's just talk about what feels good and what doesn't and um, set some real clear boundaries around that stuff, so. Because to be a real authentic artist in, in your craft, you're not necessarily going to be like anybody else. But I do realize that, you know, a canvas is only so big to a degree and, you know, certain similarities might show up. But how do you as a teacher that's showing a very specific process, in a sense, to your students and for students that have never painted before or scared shitless, they don't, they don't even have and never put paint on a canvas before. So they are wanting you as their role model. So they're like, okay, well, she's doing this. I guess I'll do that too. You know, how do you as a teacher in that moment um, explain to them that don't really copy what I'm doing, but do your own thing? <laughs> well, like I said, you know, when they're learning, it's kind of one thing, you know, and I think copying when you're learning, it can be really valuable. It's something that people have done forever. I mean, that's like basic high school art, go copy these people and learn things. Um, so I'm really okay with that. You know, when I see student work coming through that really resembles mine, I'm like, that makes total sense. They're learning from me, you know, but built into my curriculum is like a whole week, the whole Your Inspiring Life week, which is all about, let's look at you. And like, let's really start to notice what makes you you um, in terms of your preferences, your hobbies, your favorites, your, you know, things that light you up because that's the, that's the information that you should be bringing into your paintings mm -hmm. versus just looking at my paintings and trying to do what I'm doing because that is where it gets really fun and interesting. You know, that's to me what it really means to be an artist is when you're synthesizing your life and your life experience into an expression that is all your own like that's where the gold is and so when people miss that and then they start to be like i'm a professional artist and here's my art but it looks just like flora's i'm like oh you missed the point <laughs> you you fucking missed the point of why we make art and, and that's why i write those emails i'm just yeah. like hey, like remember this isn't about you know this isn't about making money, I hope, ultimately. I hope the reasons we're making art is to express something that is, is truly personal. So, um, yeah, there's so many ways to work with that. You know, I've got this, yeah, ch the, the next Studio Diary is going to have, like, a bunch of different exercises that are all, like, mining your life for information. And, and, and one of those ways is looking at other people's art, you know, and looking at other people's art, but then getting really specific about what you like about that person's art, not just I'm going to take it all, but oh, I like how you use color, I like that one shape, I like that one tool, mm -hmm. and then, you know, because sure, I have the people that have influenced me too, you know, they're all over the place, my art looks nothing like any of their art, you know, mm -hmm. I just took, like, I learned um, how to use more paint from an artist, and I, you know, that kind of thing, so, yeah. Um, what is a method that you have used um, through your journey that you can share with female entrepreneurs that can really help them get into their soul's true calling, whether that be creative or not? You know, I think a big piece of finding what our thing is, is to really pay attention to what, what actually feels interesting. And I love Elizabeth Gilbert's been talking about this a lot lately and I love it. She's like, you know, let go of needing to find your passion because <laughs> 
we might, that might not be so obvious for everybody, you know, but actually she talks about um, just pay attention to what you're curious about. And it can be like these tiny little things in your life that kind of spark something. That's, that's, those are the things to follow. Um, and then to trust that all of those things or many of those things actually have the ability to come together in some way that you might not even be able to see yet. But mm -hmm. like for, that was totally my story is that I had the, the, the body work, I had the movement, I had the art, I had music, I had community. These were all my passions. I never saw them all living in the same room together. Like yeah. to me, they were just kind of different things I liked. But then when I taught that first workshop, there they all were. And that's what made the workshop the workshop. So I think trusting that all of your interests can, can inform what, you're, what, you, what your soul wants to really do in the world. It can fit together. It can. Yeah. And you might, not, you might not be able to see it yet. I'm interested to know what your most creative um, atmosphere is. Is it a studio? Is it, um, would you feel the most creative when you're in, in nature? Or where do you like to go to feel at your best to know that you're going to create a masterpiece? <laughs> I never know that. <laughs> um, you know, God, I've been loving my studio alone lately because a lot of times I'm not alone in my studio. And so those moments where it's just like, me and my music and my candles and a whole day with like nothing else to do. That is my dream zone lately. You know, I'm just like, let me just play, you know, and without so often I'm like recording what I'm doing and t using it as a teaching tool and stuff. And, and that's all well and good, but there's something so magic for me about just going back to the roots of playing with paint and ironically and perfectly, that's when all my best ideas for teaching come is when I'm actually doing the process as a real just student of it, you know. So, um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. And I love nature. I'm just a, you know, put me in the woods and I'm always inspired. So, there's that. Well, if anybody's not following you on Instagram, I definitely recommend it because your photos are always awesome. You show pictures of your studio, which look totally rad. I'd love to come and do a... Um, studio class there and the cool thing about your studio is that you often have many other people's artwork hanging there too right so essentially you're painting in a gallery all the time a fun gallery with paint on the floor <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely when I have classes it's like everyone's art and yeah yeah it's great yeah the, the energy that's created in the workshops is just uh, I was actually just meeting with one of my workshop um, assistance this morning and she was just like it's just a magical like cocoon that gets created and you know we it doesn't just happen it's very conscious with the music and the food and the temperature and the you know every little detail like we really love to just like fine-tune so that when you walk in you do feel like you walked into a magical place where every anything is possible so especially scent too right I always find that scent and being creative is very um, or exploring our creativity is a really big part of it. Yeah, yeah, I love essential oils. And just... Can you tell us about your book, <laughs> um, Brave Intuitive Painting? And just kind of, I know how you said it kind of how it came to be by teaching that, that class, but I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful book with beautiful imagery in it, but can you just kind of, I don't know, explain to us a little bit about this book and kind of how you, how you decided to create this then? Yeah, so I, so I was asked to write it by Corey, the publisher, um, and it came as sort of a like big shock at the moment because I had only taught that one workshop. And so for me, I was still learning how to teach and convey the process. Um, and so the book was like the ultimate um, challenge for me in that way is like how to put this intuitive nonlinear process into a linear format book. It was tricky um, to figure out the bones. Once I had the bones and the organization of it, it just flowed. Um, but the, the book is divided into three main sections. And that was a key thing to finally get to. And it's let go, be bold, unfold. Nice. And so the whole first let go part is about kind of getting out of our own way and letting go of the stories that I'm not an artist and I can't do this. It's like really examining all that and just like, you know, moving through that. And then the be bold part is more of the nuts and bolts about here's the paints you want to use. And, um, you know, just the, the, the process and here's color charts and all that kind of stuff. And then really getting people to, to move from a place of like 
you know, being bold and not being timid with what they're doing. Yeah. And then the unfold is all about how to bring all of the crazy marks and the stuff that you're experimenting with together. And this is a part of the process that kind of sets my par process apart from a lot of, <laughs> can I use the word process one more time? But <laughs> like process painting is a thing. Mm -hmm. And generally with process painting, you don't care at all about what it looks like. It's all about the process. And that is a wonderful therapeutic tool. And I'm like all for that. However, I sort of bring both wor worlds together where I'm like, can we be intuitive and can we trust the moment and like respond to that while having an aesthetic sense ultimately and wanting to like our painting in the end, you know, like I think, I think it's a kind of interesting practice to try to meld those worlds. It's challenging a lot. That's where a lot of the challenge in the process comes is like those worlds kind of going like this, but uh, I've got a lot of ways to work with that. And so the unfold section is all about that. And um, I basically show the creation of one painting in that book from start to finish. Um, and then there's lots of my artwork in there and lots of little, you know, tidbits along the way. It's interesting to be talking about that book because I'm actually right in the heart of writing my second book right now. And I'm so I'm totally like in a in different, in, a different uh, angle. Yeah, I'm in a different, it's a totally different book, but there's so I'm remembering a lot of the process of writing the first book because it's really similar. It's, it's figuring out how, well, what the book's about and how it's laid out and how, you know, just the whole What's this one called? The new one called? Um, it's called Creative Revolution, Painting with the Body, Mind, and Spirit. Nice. Yeah. So it's, I, and I'm dividing, and it took me a while to get here once again, but I'm dividing the book into body, mind, and spirit. And so I kind of go into how the painting process can be. That's the linear part of it, is when you divide the book, right? <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, I need to make it very clear that the body, mind, and spirit are not separate. <laughs> like they are, but they're not separate. You know, it's very kind of like, ooh, meta. But um, I'm uh, working through it. I think it's going to be a really good second, second edition. So. What is your take on when a painting is done? I'm going to give you an example. Um, I paint quite a bit and sometimes I just don't like my painting in the end, right? But it'll stay up on a wall for six months and I'll like walk by it every time and I'll just be like, no. <laughs> so on occasion, my fiance's come home and I've just literally been painting over it on the wall and he'll be like, what are you doing? He'll be like, that was a work of art. I'll be like, but I wasn't happy with it, right? Yeah. So I would say, like I say to him with his music, you know, you're not going to put out a song that you're not really happy with, right? So like me with a painting. So, um, but, but you are of the nature to always be doing layers, layers, layers. When do you say this painting's done, I want to keep it forever? Or when you say it might still be changing? <laughs> For me, it's like the changes I'm making become less and uh, less grand, you know, like when I'm building the beginning layers, I'm turning the orientation of the canvas, I'm going, I'm going to try this palette. Now I'm going to try this palette, try this image, take that image away. Like there's really big changes happening with each layer, drastic. And then as the painting starts to settle, like, okay, it's this orientation and I'm going to work with these things. Um, the changes with each layer become more subtle until the point where I'm literally like, I sit back in this one chair I have and I make little notes, like add one more line to this one little spot. I mean, it's like tiny little stuff that I can only get by being back yeah. and then we'll make those tiny little changes. And then I sit back in the chair and eventually I'm just kind of sitting back in the chair and nothing is calling me into action. Right. There's a peacefulness that I feel that doesn't mean like weeks later, I might not bust out another layer on it. You know, like that's the nature of it. And I've definitely done what you've done where I'm like, this old painting needs to be like whatever, you know, and I'm happy to do that. You know, a lot of times I sell my work, so it's like out of my control. Yeah. Thing. But um, yeah, I, some paintings just come together in a really graceful, easy way where it's like, oh my God, that's done. And it feels great. And then other ones are like this. I mean, I've got paintings that I've been working on for years. Yeah. <laughs> Just randomly like kicking around my studio where I'm like, oh, you old friend, I'm going to work on you. <laughs> I, want, I want to comment about your dog. So for people that uh, follow you on Instagram and in your videos and things like that, you have a dog named Pearl. He was a white dog, but you know, I was thinking about your dog the other day and I was like, the dog is a perfect mascot for you. It is a white canvas, <laughs> right? <laughs> like it, it totally is. It's in the, your dog is so cute. It seems to be always in your space, always in your art space, right? <laughs> Does he ever get paint all over him? 
paint on her. Yeah, she's there for all the workshops, you know, like the whole time. And she's part of the experience. It's inevitable. (laughs) So where can people find you? Give us all the spots that people can find you and start following you and working with you. Thank you. Um, my, I have a new website, which I'm really stoked on. It took me forever to get it done, but um, it's florabully.com. So okay. my name. And then that's the hub, you know, that's where you can find all my social media stuff and um, all my courses. Um, the thing I'm really excited about right now is the Studio Diaries program, and that's a monthly subscription program, and it's only 18 bucks a month, which I think is kind of a screaming deal, and you get a whole set of about six or seven videos every month that are painting videos, you know, creative exercises, couch chats, like, I'm just yep. like chatting with somebody about something and then there's like a holistic element so we've got movement sequences and nutrition stuff and um I'm just having a lot of fun creating them and they're they're pretty rich with content so that's kind of my latest thing and then I've got my Bloom True e-course which you took which is a five week like get the whole shebang in one course it's much more intense and long and deep um, than the studio diary. So I kind of created studio diaries as an ongoing inspiration for people that maybe took the course and they want the next thing. So, uh, but you know, either one can be good for for anybody. So. Or the studio diaries is perfect for somebody that, um, you know, maybe isn't expressing their creativity every single day, but kind of wants to stay in check and make sure yeah. that they are still being influenced in a way um is there like collaborations on there like do you see other you said like you do couch chats and stuff but um with the information like are you collaborating with like um holistic practitioner like different things like that or is it mainly kind of your your voice you know it's it's primarily my voice but every month has a couple other voices you know the couch chat that's somebody else and then there's always another video um that's somebody else doing something and then yeah. some there's more videos of other people. So every month is kind of unique, but yeah. And I'm wanting to actually broaden that scope even more and let it be more voices coming in um, because I just, uh, you know, uh, that's my nature to be collaborative like that. And I think it just gets more interesting. So yes, open to that for sure. So before we go, I have one more question. Um, What makes you wild, creative, and confident? Oh, question. Um. I think just, you know, living from a place of possibility gets me excited, like not getting um, stuck in ruts. I'm I'm the type of person that's always like reinventing myself in different ways. And I think that feeds my wild, creative and confident self is that, you know, every every day is a new day and every year is a new year. And, you know, I just never want to get bored I don't think I ever will be but (laughs) I feel like you have a very good story for creative individuals that are because you said before like you know you weren't making a ton of money when you started out when you decided to be an artist so we're gonna have that quote like the starving artist which can kind of become somebody's mindset oh I can't make make money doing something creative because of this or that right like things that we have been told over the years and you have a really great story because you've really um like you said, taken all the aspects that you loved out of your life and basically just put them together. And, you know, and that can happen for everybody. So, I mean, whether your, you know, passions or your interests are like the craziest things and they don't connect, they probably can connect and you probably can create something amazing out of them. And thank God for the internet. You know, that's how you find your people that are interested in that one weird little thing you just made. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing your time with us. It's been awesome. Um, I follow you. You're you're a very inspiring and colorful person. I love your art. Love the vibe of it. And um, because all of your art is just different moods, right? I mean, every painting is kind of just a different mood. I love that painting behind you as well. So, but thank you so much. And um, everybody, definitely uh, check out Flora's bio. You'll get all of her links and everything to where you can find her and all of the goodies that she is giving out these days. And yeah, and keep creative. Yeah, thanks so much. This was super fun. Bye.